Do you operate your life out of a desire of what you should do or what you want to do? Do you really like, enjoy and feel passionate about the life that you're living? Do you want to know the two biggest killers that society uses in order to make us feel that we have to do something as opposed to something we want to do? Sound a little bit confusing? Bear with me. We're going to make it all clear for you on today's episode of Going Deep. So welcome. Welcome to today's episode of Going Deeper with John Morris. Join the show that tackles the topics that many around the world struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis. From mental and physical health to emotional and spiritual well-being. But that's not all. John also shares his teaching on more focused topics, such as anxiety, self-image, gaining employment, the importance of educating oneself, developing a deeper spiritual connection, mental and physical well-being, and so much more. Want to be the best you can be? You're in the right place. And now please welcome Mind, Body and Soul's very own John Morris. Hey folks and welcome to another exciting episode of Going Deeper. I am your host as always, John Morris, the psychologist in training, author, speaker, teacher and whatever else I am. Hoping you're doing all great today wherever you are in the world. It's awesome to be here with you today. So today we are going to be talking about the two killer words. Now do you know what the two killer words are? Ought to. Ought to. Okay? So you should be, you ought to be doing something. You ought to be nice to that person. You ought to be, you know, doing whatever it might be. Okay? If you've grown up, folks, in a traditional family or a church setting or even in school, I guarantee you at some point in time you will have heard the phrase, well, John, you ought to be doing whatever it might be, you ought to be their friend. It's not something we necessarily want to do, but it's something we should do. You know when you're in school and you've had a fight, for example, with another boy, or in some cases another girl, you know, and then you say, well, you two ought to shake hands and make up. And it's never something that you think, oh, yes, I'm shaking hands now, whoa, everything's great. It's oftentimes, oh, right, I ought to do this because it's the appearance stuff. Um, if, you, if you've grown up in church, for example, the amount of times that you will hear, and in other religious institutions, you will hear, well, we ought to be doing this as a church. We ought to be tithing more. We ought to be giving more of our time. We ought to be doing whatever it might be. And oftentimes people sit there and they don't do because they don't want to do. There's never been something that's compelled them to get them excited about it. It's just a case of, well, we ought to be doing this. And the question that comes back in a person's mind, which is an objection, is why? Why should I? Why ought I be doing this? If it's traditional families, well, we ought to meet up. We ought to have this dinner. We ought to do this. We ought to do that. Okay, so I think I've made the picture clear. Okay, it is the two biggest killers of passion. Why? Well, let's get clear as to what ought to mean, shall we? Ought to means that we basically should. We have to. Now, there are certain things, folks, in life that we have to do, okay? And ought to is different to have to. There's two different things. I'll explain that in a second. But ought to is literally, well, you know, we should be doing because society dictates that it's the correct thing to do. It's the right way to be. Okay, you, you ought to be nice to that person. You ought to hold your tongue. You ought to, you know, think all these pure and wonderful thoughts. Okay, you ought not to be getting angry and frustrated when someone's really prodding you because it doesn't make for a really healthy lifestyle. You ought to. But they're the two biggest killers of any life because you stop being yourself and you present, as we covered, uh, I believe, on last week's episode of uh, uh, Bridging the Gap, um, the whole thing of presenting this false self. You know, So when you ought to do something, you ought to be behaving a certain way, you're presenting potentially a false image of yourself. Does that make sense? So... The effects of the ought to condition, as I call it, is that, you know, we, we go out into the world and we ought to be nice to our colleagues, even if they're treating us like rubbish. Well, we ought to do this and we ought to do that. But the whole thing about it, folks, that really switches and you become passionate when it changes from ought to to want to. Okay, want to is a humongous thing. Why? Because you inject passion in there. It's something you're excited about, it's something you're delighted and you can't wait to get to work. I want to go to work. Why? Because it makes a contribution to society, the economy, and it pays for my house. I want to, you know, go out on a date with that guy or that girl. I want to spend time with my family, you know. 
when you start what you can see there the difference in my mood and the way I'm speaking as well when you want to do something it means that you're fueled with passion that is what's going to take you from where you are to where you want to be as opposed to well I ought to go to work and you know well you ought to go to work because it's what's going to pay for your house but if you're saying I ought to do this I ought to do that it means you don't really want to but you know that it needs to be done I ought to do my homework I ought to study I ought to pay my tax return whatever it might be when you can change it and you want to and you find enough reasons for the reason why you want to you can literally change your life. I want to pay my tax return. Why do I want to pay my tax return? Because I'm contributing to the economy, to health, to schools, to study. I'm contributing to the police and the security around the world. I'm contributing to our fire service. I'm contributing to charities. That's why I want to. Bang! The more money I make, the more money that I can contribute to other causes. See what I did there? As opposed to, well, I ought to do my tax return because the government just wants to take my money doesn't sound as good does it doesn't make you feel as passionate now like I said folks there are certain things in life that we have to do if you're self-employed you need to do a tax return otherwise you end up in a lot of trouble with a taxman but when you can get really passionate about it you can do it and literally be joyful in whatever it is you choose you know rather than I ought to make that I ought to make that appointment for my blood testing oh, well I don't really enjoy the idea of someone stabbing me in the arm and taking my blood I want to make that appointment for my blood testing because I want to make sure that the medication I'm on isn't interfering with other elements of my body. I want to make sure that I have a good routine test on my body to make sure there's nothing going in, on in there that could be bigger problems down the line. See what I did there? It's those slight changes and when you can get in a mindset of I want to do this and you train your brain to doing this. Remember all of this folks is training your brain. When we get to that point where we want to do something and we focus our mind on I want to do this. I want to do the washing up. Why do you want to do the washing up? Well, because I want to have a nice clean home. It makes me feel that I've developed in my own self-disciplines. And it also means that, you know, I'm, I'm taking the load off of somebody else. I want to clean the bath. That should be a given. Just saying. I want to clean the toilet, you know, or whatever it might be. But do you see there the difference between ought to, which is the passion killer, and want to, which is the passion fueler, the passion injector, and the difference that it makes in your life is humongous. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this little uh, episode of Going Deeper. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And if you did, leave us a comment in the section below. Let me know that you're enjoying these shows. Let me know as well if you've got topics that you want me to cover or for Alicia and I to cover in Bridging the Gap um, and guests that you'd be interested in seeing for the Mind, Body and Soul podcast, which takes place on Friday. We've got a lot of things going on. Three shows per week. This is just, you know, too much to handle but it's not. It's amazing, and it's always great content. Folks, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you're interested in supporting the show, head to patreon.com forward slash mind, body, and soul. You will absolutely love the content we've got there exclusive on Patreon for life coaching, for teenagers, for adults, for group coaching, for courses. There's all sorts of stuff that are there. And if you're looking for more in-depth courses as well on how to deal with anxiety, how to be the master of your emotions, how to take control of your own destiny, how to set goals, we have got some phenomenal courses that are brand new and uploaded as of this morning at thebattlesweallface.com. And you can get in there. It's in the shop slash resource section. You just go up there at the top. You can see it. And uh, I think if you're really serious in 2021 about getting a handle on yourself and getting a handle on your emotions and your physical wellness and everything else about you. Basically, if, you get, if you're serious about you and investing in you, then this is really where you want to be. And uh, I think you will love, love the courses that we've got there. Um, and there are 27 courses, all that focus on specific areas. So we've got two on anxiety, we've got emotions, we've got developing a, a healthy lifestyle, we've got developing disciplines, disciplines for success you know, and so much more that's there, head over to thebattleswheelface.com. You'll love it. Until next time, folks, I have been your host, John Morris. Have an amazing week, and uh, I will catch you same place, same time, for Going Deeper next Tuesday. Take care. Do you, your son or daughter, struggle with direction, clarity, and purpose? Maybe you struggle with anxiety. Maybe you struggle with self-esteem or confidence issues. Maybe you've got great ideas, but you've no idea how to get from where you are to where you want to be. 
Don't worry, you're not alone. People around the world struggle with these issues. Hi there, I'm John Morris. I'm the coach of the creative mind and I'm also a psychologist in training. For the last two decades, I've worked with people from all walks of life and all over the world, all with a wide variety of issues. I've worked with people from youth groups to adult education to people dealing with day-to-day -day living issues. And each one of them has an amazing story to tell and we've helped them get clear as to where they are and clear as to where they want to be. And I want to help you too. Unlike a lot of life coaches and therapists that like to drag things on and leave you dangling on the carrot, I want to make sure that each and every single time that we meet and have a life coaching session together, that you never ever leave saying, man, that was a waste of time, or I didn't get the value that I desired. I am committed to making sure that each and every single time we meet, you are one step closer by the time we finish to a goal that you have in mind. So why should you work with me? Well, let me tell you, as I said, I'm committed to making sure that I provide value, that I provide something that's step by step and easy to follow. I'm also a fantastic listener. I've been blessed with the gift of listening and I love to listen to people, their stories, their, their dreams, their desires, because there's nothing more energetic and passionate to me than when a client gets their first desire or they get that goal or they hit that big target or whatever it might be. And also, as the trifecta, I am committed to you to helping you take action. So whether or not it be deciding on the university you want to go to, deciding on the course that you want to be at, helping you get excited and passionate about your work environment, whatever it might be, I am committed to helping that happen. I'm also committed if you need to shed some pounds, if you need to gain some muscle mass, if you need to, I don't know, develop your self-esteem, I'm committed to helping you take action and following a step-by-step plan of action that we can put together. But now folks, I want to tell you about the early bird special offer that we are launching right now. It is for 10 people and 10 people alone. That's right, if you are interested in having life coaching sessions with me one-on-one, -on -one, 10 people have the opportunity to do that and we're looking to help these people change their lives completely. We take ages 14 and upwards, so if you're interested in learning how to get from where you are to where you want to be, to really develop that passion to live a life that you enjoy as opposed to a life that you wake up and think, ah, oh. you know, how to develop and change your mindset from maybe a negative one to a positive one. Understanding what fuels your mindset and understanding what creates the kind of life that you want to live, then get in touch with me today. I would love to hear from you. As I say, this is open only for 10 people and once it's done, it's done. So click that box below, get in touch. Let's have a conversation backwards and forwards and see if we're a fit for each other. And I look forward to working with you. Have an amazing day folks take care god bless and i will see you soon